Hi, my name's Harry. Welcome to Weldon Fabrication. Today we're going to be looking at safe setup and shutdown of a MIG machine, uh, as well as uh, simple parameters for getting yourself set up and started just with a bead on a plate. So the machine itself, um, unlike some of the other machines we've looked at, this MIG machine we're looking at at the moment is a transformer rectifier. Um, we've got a separate wire feed unit on the top, our power sources on the bottom. Um, Bench here, we've got some basic auxiliary, auxiliary equipment such as a pair of pliers and with snips, wire brush. Um, return part of the circuit, we've got our return clamp with our lead which runs round into the front of our machine down here. Um, and we've got our MIG welding torch. Okay, MIG welding torch is made up of some basic parts. You've got the torch body itself, trigger, the neck of the torch, and we've got what's called a gas diffuser or the nozzle on the front here. If we pull that off there, behind that we've got what's called the contact tip and the gas diffuser in this instance it's got a little spring clip on there as well which retains the uh, gas nozzle on the back. Inside the gas nozzle there's a cork insulator between the outer body and the inner body basically to stop you from arcing between the two when welding. Okay so that drops on like so. Um, so yeah in terms of things like gas flow so if you're using a full size cylinder or a half cylinder of uh, argon CO2 mix whether it be um, 0.5% uh, uh, CO2 mixed with argon, or whether it be uh, a 12 or 20%, depending on whether you're doing thin gauge material or thicker material, that'll be dependent upon uh, the type of shielding gas you would want. Thinner gauge material, you're going to use a lower percentage of shielding gas compared to a thicker material. Uh, flow rate, approximately uh, 12 to 14 litres per minute, uh, which you're going to get off your regulator, and we'll go through that in a second. Um, but depending on the size of your cylinder, two standard, we said BOC cylinders for argument's sake, two standard cylinders would be a uh, W for a large cylinder and a Y size for a half cylinder, uh, which run roughly or approximately 230 bar in pressure. So we're going to use our regulator, and in this instance we're using a manifold system. But on our regulator here on the wall, um, we're running from cylinder pressure down to working pressure, so it's going to step it from 230 bar down to our working pressure, which is a couple of bar, and then it's going to step it down again to our flow rate, which is measuring litres per minute on the second gauge. And this second gauge we want set at approximately 12 to 14 litres per minute. Okay, so when we're looking at uh, the machine itself, the machine itself, there's lots of functions on the machine. Uh, so it's a separate wire feed unit. So our wire spool is on the back of the machine. And internally we have our drive roller system. You can see at some point in time it's been done up a little bit tight, which is why it's got this dust in the bottom here, shaved the wire as it's gone through. Um, so we've got two, a twin roll system to pressurise uh, onto the wire. So these can be popped off like so. Um, and you can see the wire running between the rollers. Uh, so that just nips onto the wire like so and allows it to feed it through the, into the Euro connector and the torch body itself. Um, so on the outside of the machine, we've got a few functions we can go through. So we've got our wire feed control. So effectively this is measured in metres per minute. So the amount of wire that's going to be coming out. Um, I want to set this today on roughly about between seven and eight, so just in between seven and a half approximately, we've got what's called the inching button. What that basically does is as we press that, if I turn the machine on, as I press the inching button, you can see on the torch nozzle itself, it inches the wire through, but with no gas. Um, we have what's called the purging button, and again, the opposite way around, so I press that, you can hear the gas coming through, but no wire, and we've got what's called latch in between, so if I press this, I can pull the trigger, on the trigger, and then off the trigger, and then that turns it on and off. Or alternatively, on a single, it's so you've got single or double. On single, hold the trigger on, wire comes out, finger off, wire stops. Okay, the bottom function on the machine there, flip that wire off. The bottom function on the machine is for spot welding. So you can actually preset it. So if you're plug welding through, say, a car panel or something like that, you can actually pre select the number of seconds you want to weld for and then you're going to get consistent spot welds every single time when you're plug welding maybe two skins of material together. Um, on the bottom control unit down the bottom here, um, so we've got a volts and current in terms of our meters here, so a voltmeter and ammeter, and this gives us our readouts of the ranges we're going to be welding in. Um, so currently, uh, you see it's set on 23 volts, um, although actually when we arc up that will vary slightly, so we're going to be, ha we're going to be welding approximately today at a about uh, 19 and a half to 20 volts, and our current range is going to be approximately 130. So on this particular machine, we've got what's called coarse and fine settings, as well as our on-off switch. We've got our coarse and fine settings, um, and this is to step the voltage up. So we've got big jumps in the voltage and the smaller jumps. So we've set on two, I believe seven, 
and our wire speed is set on roughly seven as well. So we're going to have reasonably large jumps up on, or too large on the course, and then we're going to have seven on the fine, and then turn the machine on. Um, so in terms of setup of the torch, I'll turn off the isolate just for a minute. So in terms of our torch, depending on whether you're left handed or right handed, it's important you're always pushing with me, not dragging up. You know, in the UK we push rather than drag like the Americans. So we're going to push the torch in the direction we're going to go in. Um, so if you're left handed, predominantly you're going to be going from left to right. And if you're right handed, you're going to be going right to left. I'm left handed personally, so I'm going to go left to right. Um, and angles of tilt, so again, much the same as when we looked at it from MMA, our angles of tilt uh, from side to side, if that's 180 degrees, we're going to be at 90 degrees, and then we're going to drop our angles back to approximately 80 degrees like so, and we're going to push the torch through the material. Our arc length, um, our arc length is going to be approximately 10 to 15 mil away from the face of the material as we're going along. Depends upon uh, the mode of metal transfer, which we'll talk about another day, but we're using dip transfer today, or sometimes referred to as short circuit. All right, okay, so put my welding helmet on. Turn the machine on. So our gas is already on. Um, unlike with MMA, the torch isn't live until you pull the trigger, and it's when the wire comes out and touches the face of the material, at that point in time, it's gonna become live. Uh, so what we're gonna do is have our angle set. Again, it's important to be comfortable, so in terms of our positioning going through, we're gonna arc up. Um, create the arc and move along slowly and then when we finish take our finger off the trigger and then we're, we're done. Okay, mind your eyes. It's important as you go along, it's important as you go along not to bring your torch around and your angles around like this because what you'll find is the gaseous profile, your shielding gas will end up drawing the atmosphere in behind the torch and then you'll end up with porosity, so those little holes in the weld. So it's important to keep those consistent angles all the way through as you're welding, okay? And travel speed as well, and that's probably the sort of profile we're looking for uh, just for a simple bead on the plate in a low dip transfer. What you can see is on the, uh, on the front of the machine now, uh, when we've arced up, it's actually given us a a volt and current readout, which is important because all, all machines vary in terms of your volt and your wire feed unit. Um, but we know that we run on about seven to seven and a half wire. Our, our voltage is uh, 19.8, so I said between 19 and a half and 20 is what we're going to be running at, and I'm 133 amps. So some of you will have maybe a digital display on your machine where actually you can preset your voltage and your currents. So that's roughly right for a simple bead on the plate in terms of uh, starting out for welding. Okay, um, again, shut down, it's quite important, so we'll turn our gas off first. All we're going to do is press the purge button on the front of the machine, and what we'll find is up here, as we do it, it's going to purge our regulator through, and we'll see that needle drop right the way down. Okay, um, and then we can isolate our machine here. Okay, the only other thing that I'd probably take into consideration when you are doing, well, and if you're doing quite a lot, um, from a simple point of view is, Maintenance. So if you're clipping the wire, always try and make sure you point it down when you clip it, because as you clip it off, it's going to fire away. And the other thing is, good maintenance on your shroud, okay, or gas nozzle. So just making sure you keep it nice and clean, and all the little bits of spatter that build up, there's little bits of metal that build up in the end of the nozzle, just clean them out to make sure that they're not going to burn back or impede the gas flow coming out the torch, because again, that's going to cause you issues in terms of getting porosity as well. Okay, thank you very much.